Hi, I'm Ethan Devitt, and welcome to 50 Faces TV. This is part of an occasional series where we speak with individuals who've built successful portfolio careers. We wanted to ask them what goes into building a career, what advice they'd have for others seeking to build such a career, and any pitfalls that others should be aware of. I'm joined today by Carol Mahan, who's a non-executive director based in Dublin. We previously worked together at Federated Hermes. Welcome, Carol. Great to see you here. Thank you, Ethan. I'm delighted to be here. I've been a, a big fan and supporter of the 50 Faces since it launched. So as I say, absolutely thrilled to be speaking with you today. Well, you've pursued a portfolio career since 2021. How did you go about building that portfolio? Yeah, well, as you say, I mean, I'm, I'm only kind of three years into building out my portfolio career. So in many ways, I still considered myself to be a newbie. But if I do think back on my journey so far, I would say there's a few key things that I had to do. So the first one of those I'd say was consider what it was I was looking for. And that was very much, did I want funds? Did I want service companies? Did I want management companies, et cetera? So be really clear on what it was I wanted. And also what role I wanted to kind of play. So was I looking for an independent director role? Was I looking for chair roles, OED roles, et cetera? And I would say that the other thing on that was to consider risk profile. So again, you know, was my risk appetite to look at regulated businesses, unregulated, et cetera. And so I think it's really clear. It's very important at the beginning to be clear on what it is you're looking for, because you get approached about a lot of things. And, you know, 12 months into your journey with no with no boards, it's very important to kind of stick to what it is you're looking for. Um, the second thing I would say to you is be very clear on what, you know, on what your value proposition is. So I had to sit down and I actually documented it as, you know, what are my skills in regard to this? What do I bring into the boardroom? And I think, you know, that's something you need to be able to articulate very clearly from day one. The next thing I would say was you have to just speak to everybody. So think about who's in your network, who can help me with that first, that key first appointment. Um, and as I say, one of the things that I did that I thought was really useful was I always ended those conversations with who else should I be speaking to and can you introduce me to that person? And that was a great way to kind of build out your network and really, really think about who you needed to talk to. And then the final thing I would say was you just have to hustle. I mean, you have to be visible. You have to be seen talking to people. And it takes time so that you do have to be patient with that as well. And you sat on many boards. What do you think makes an effective board director or chair in your view? The first thing I would say to you is that there's really no one size fits all. So every board will have its own style, will have its own culture, etc. So it's really important to be sufficiently flexible to deal with each of them to make sure that it's an effective environment. Um, that being said, um, I have had the privilege of working with some great directors over my career. And I suppose the key things that I would observe would be, you know, definitely a focus on doing the right thing. Um, independence of mind and um, being curious enough to ask the right questions and not assume that things are happening or, you know, the, the assuming the answers. Um, you have to be willing to work together in a group and um, cohesively and stuff like that. Um, you definitely need to be prepared. So always come to meetings, having, you know, read your packs, knowing what questions you want to ask, understanding what you need to do outside of the boardroom as well and stuff. Um, you also, I think, have to be someone who's willing to assert their position um, and articulate their views. I think that's that's really important. Um, and I would say the final thing maybe is um, you have to be able to listen. I think it's very hard to give direction and, and advice if you haven't heard the full story and you haven't ensured people are being heard. So I think active listening is very important. And in this fast paced regulatory environment, how are the liabilities and roles of directors evolving? Well, I think that exactly to your point, I think that the role of the director is very much evolving as the regulatory environment or other factors increase. So if I, if I take the regulatory side at the moment, I mean, we're seeing either a lot of new legislation, a lot of new rule, rules coming in or central banks kind of sending out best practice industry notes, etc. And so that very much changes the expectation of the board and each of the directors. You also, I think, at the moment, even have things like technology playing both a positive and a negative role there. And, you know, you have things like AI and, again, making sure that, you know, we're using that for good in our companies or, you know, cyber threats. And again, making sure that we're resilient against those. So I would say from the director's point of view, 
um, you, you need to ensure that the entities that you are working with are constantly improving and constantly making sure that they are more resilient and that they are always meeting next best practice and raising standards in line with um, the regulatory change, etc. And I would say for me as a director as well, I think it's very important that I'm keeping myself up to date on what's happening. So constantly knowing what are those changes? How do they impact the boards that I'm working with? What are the solutions we need to look at? And so again, really understanding all of those changes is is key to the role of the director. And when you look back at your portfolio career so far, have there been any highs and lows? And would there be any advice that you give to others seeking to build a similar career? Yeah, what I would say to you is, well, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm delighted to say that there are lots more highs than lows. I mean, I think it is a fantastic space to be part of. There's great flexibility, great variety in terms of your roles and stuff. But I suppose two highs that I would call out, um, first of all, is kind of supporting new businesses as they enter the market here in Ireland and kind of even being a little part of that journey and seeing the success that they're having. I think that's a real, a real high and you get a real buzz from that. Um, the second thing I would say is the people. There are just some fantastic people working in, in that directorship space. And if I think back to when I started out, people were so generous in terms of their support and the time that they give you, etc. And I think now, you know, we're very lucky that there is a, a great INED community and this great collaboration within that group. So even though it's, it, you know, it's a, an isolating role in that you are one person, there is that community spirit around as well. Um, in terms of the lows, I would say to you, it is a difficult space to break into. And I think you do have to have a lot of determination. You do have to have a lot of patience. There isn't always great transparency around, you know, the processes, the roles, the fees, etc. And so I think, as I say, you do really need to, to work through that. But it is worth it in the end. So stick with it. Anyone thinking of moving into the space? Well, thanks so much, Carol. Great to see you here on 50 Faces TV. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ethan. I'm Ethan Devitt. Thank you for watching 50 Faces TV.